Angela Merkel. Of all the characters in this drama, she's probably the single most important. Partly that's because Germany has all the money, and also because this crisis isn't just about Greece. In a sense, it's also about Germany's role in Europe. Alexis Tsipras is also facing a major dilemma of his own. He became the Greek Prime Minister by promising to end austerity, to cancel all those nasty bailout tax rises and spending cuts, and to do that while staying in the Euro. Now, election promises are always far easier to make than to keep. If Greece is going to get more bailout cash, which it desperately needs to pay its bills, it's going to have to continue with at least some of these cuts. Cyprus refuses. And it's fair to say things haven't exactly been improved by Greece's finance minister, Yanis Varoufakis. Perhaps the most unconventional man ever to have occupied a role like this. He's a leather jacket wearing, motorbike riding, financial rock star. In a series of meetings with his European counterparts, he's torn up their suggestions, rejected any compromises, and even suggested that Greece would sooner default than compromise. It's alienated those he's been negotiating with. And no one more so than Christine Lagarde, the head of the International Monetary Fund. After the latest finance minister's meeting, she said that next time there were discussions on Greece, there needed to be adults in the room, and not so subtle dig at the Greek finance minister. Και εξηγεί ότι ενδεχόμενη έξοδος της Ελλάδας από το ευρώ θα ωφελούσε ίσως τον Βρετανό Πρωθυπουργό Κάμερον. If Greece defaults and leaves the euro, then there might have to be a change to European treaties, particularly if they want to shore up the existing members of the single currency. And treaty change is just what Cameron wants to give him a decent chance of winning the EU referendum.